everyone, and welcome back to the Hopelessly Bedrock SMP. My name is Light, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I am having a great day, because today is the day that we actually set up our iron farm. It's been a long time coming, and I'm the type of guy who uses a lot of iron, because I use a lot of hoppers. So finally getting one of these on the go is going to be incredible. Now, however, we are starting today at the skeleton spawner farm that we finished in the last episode. As you can see, it's been filling up. We have lots of legs. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hack these guys down. And when all that is done, I'll meet you back up on the surface so we can complete the iron farm. Welcome back, everyone. We are back up on the surface. It is daytime. It is a lovely day out. So while it is still daytime, I thought I would take this opportunity to talk about iron farms and the mechanics of how they work on the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft. So what makes up a village in the Bedrock Edition? Well, as far as an iron farm is concerned, a village needs to contain at least 10 villagers and 20 beds. Any iron farm with that kind of setup will, if you're in a single player world, it'll definitely produce more than enough iron uh, to suit your needs. But if you really wanted to ramp up the production, you could actually raise your amount of villagers to 20 to essentially get double the spawning rates from one singular farm. Now, unfortunately for the next piece in the tutorial, we do have to wait for nighttime because it does involve working with our villagers. And to do this part, it is way easier to do this at night. So I would definitely recommend any work for your villagers in regards to the iron farm, other than, you know, getting them to your location should be done at night. So when nighttime comes, we'll be back. Welcome back. So as you can see, I've already done uh, some of the setup and this would include the actual linking to the beds and the workstations. I would definitely recommend when you're bringing your villagers in, bring them in one by one at night. When you're setting up the beds, put the middle one down first because that's going to act as essentially your village center. And once that guy, you know, once you get your first guy in and he links to the bed, he will essentially be the village leader. Now at that point, you can also give him a workstation. The workstation is, you know, it's totally up to you, whatever you want to choose. I actually trade with these guys as well, which is why all mine have lecterns and I do have a farmer, you know, but if you wanted to make this a little cheaper, you could use something like looms or something, something like that. If you're not going to be trading with your villagers. Now, once you have them in, they're all set up like this and they're sleeping. This is the best time to complete the remainder of the cage that needs to go around them. But the first thing that we need to do is we actually have to address the floor above us. As it stands, this little area is three, roughly, you know, three and a half blocks tall. So that is actually big enough for an iron golem to spawn in here. So we need to fix that. We're going to have to drop the height of the uh, floor here down by about a block. So I'm going to go ahead. We'll do that and we'll meet back here when I'm done. Okay, so there is the floor all slabbed to make that essentially full blocks. And we've also added in two rows of polished andesite slabs. So these slabs here are going to be right on top of the villagers and will still allow them enough room to see the other guys and do their thing just like that. All right, so now that they're doing that, I'm going to put in another row. Now, fortunately, you might have to wait for some of the guys to move so you can get uh, this next row of slabs in. 
but just keep on trying and you will get it. Any torches that are in your way, of course, you're going to want to remove those. Okay, so that's that side done. Now let's see if we can get the... Ooh, good, they're out of the way. So we'll be able to get the rest of this side. Now, in order to complete the next step of this, we do need to wait until the villagers are sleeping again and back in bed. And that way, we can assure that everyone is in the right spot. Because the next thing to do is actually put the cage around them. All right, so when we come back to nighttime, I'll meet you guys back here and we'll finish up. Welcome back, everyone. It is nighttime. The villagers are fast asleep. Uh, during the day, I did take the opportunity to lay a few more slabs and encase a little bit more of the perimeter. But now that these guys are back in bed, we can go ahead and we can complete the rest. That completes the slab ring around the villagers, which should indeed keep them in there. But I am still going to go ahead and I'm going to throw up some uh, fence posts around the perimeter. Now at the same time, I'm going to uh, move these torches and I'm going to put them in here just to make the villagers feel a little more safe. So a couple there couple there and that'll be nice adequate light now if you want you could uh, throw a few up around the perimeter however it will interfere with placing your fence posts unless you put them on the corner but if you only put a fence post here and a fence post here that would actually leave a gap so if we didn't have these slabs here it would leave a gap that the villager could possibly escape through in this case, though, because we have the uh, slabs here, the villagers should not be able to get out of the ring. So, for me, leaving the gap will be fine. Alright, so I gotta grab my fence posts. We'll go ahead, we'll start laying those in. Okay, so there we are. We have all the fence posts placed in. Uh, the guys are nice and caged. So now I'm just going to wait another moment just to make sure that everybody can sleep and everything is all good. And as long as we are good on those respects, next we'll go down to the pool where the iron golems are going to be spawning. Uh, so I'll tell you how that's going to work and at the same time we'll build the kill chamber. So we'll see you then. We are back. It is nighttime again. And as we can see, our villagers are definitely, definitely fast asleep. So they are all in the right positions, which is fantastic. This means that we can actually move on to the next part, which, like I say, will be down in the pool where the golems will spawn. Now, we are not quite done here in this villager area. We will have to come back here to place the final 10 beds. However, that will be the last thing we actually do. So let me go ahead, I'll fill this in, cover those guys up, and I'll meet you down at the pool. Here we are in the pool for the iron farm. As you can see, I've already uh, done all the digging for the hole here. We do have a three block high pool. That is to allow for the golems to easily fit in here and allow the water to flow them down into the hole. And our villagers are actually right above here. And this little hole that's cut out here in the middle, this is actually going to be the drop chute that leads down into the kill chamber. All right, so first things first, let's see what we can do about the uh, villagers themselves. Okay, so that is the perimeter done. We can see all the fences moving around. Uh, now the next thing that we need to do, based on what I'm seeing here, is we are gonna have to take out another layer here on the top and add another layer on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll do that, and we'll meet back here when that part is done. Welcome back, everyone. All right, so I have the those couple changes made. As we can see, we're still three blocks high. 
but now we do have that three blocks including the bottom of the beds or sorry should i say the top of the three blocks is now the bottom of the beds and that is exactly what we are looking for all right now the next phase in this process will be to uh, remove the stone from underneath the villagers now this part here i can't stress this enough you have to be very careful depending on the pickaxe you have um, my pickaxe is basically top of the line except for being netherite uh, so you know if i hit it you know if i hit in the wrong spot that bed's coming down along with the villager and it's going to be a huge pain in the butt to get them back up there so when you're doing this piece you can either try using you know a less stronger uh, pickaxe or just be extremely careful so for me, I literally need to only hit these pieces of stone one time. Like that. So I'm just going to go ahead one by one, taking my time, ensuring I do not hit any of the beds. Like that. All right, so now we can see the bottom of our beds exposed. And that being said, everything except for the water in the pool should now be done. Now the water we will do after we create the kill chamber. So that's actually going to be the next step is digging down for the kill chamber. Now, typically I like to dig down by about nine blocks. As we can see, we are already two. So I'm going to go ahead we'll dig down the seven more. All right. Now the next thing to do is to dig out on the sides. There we have it. That This is the initial dig done uh, for the kill chamber room. So now that we have that done, you can actually get rid of these temporary blocks that we placed here. And now we have to make a decision. The decision is, is how do we want to actually build the kill chamber? So the way I like to do it is, of course, using some lava, magma blocks, and some hopper minecarts. Now, before I start uh, doing this, I also have to determine one more thing, and that is where our exit is going to be from the kill chamber. So to do that, we're going to pillar back up and find where our hole is over at the set of stairs. Okay, so it's over there. So when we go down, we just have to dig straight out. Okay, well now that we have our exit built, I'm going to want the kill chamber and the chests and everything facing the exit. So when we put the chests down, we're actually going to put them over here. Alright, now to start the kill chamber, the first thing that we're going to need to do is put down some hoppers. Okay, I believe that is in the right spot. Yes, it is. Okay, so now that we're down one more, go ahead and put in our two chests. And that's going to create a double. And now it also gives us something to attach the hoppers to. So when you're attaching these hoppers, you will need to crouch. I'm on Xbox, so for me, that is the B button. But I believe if you're playing on Windows 10, it's probably Shift. Once you have the first two hoppers placed, go ahead and place your last two. Again, um, connecting into the back of the other hoppers going into the chest. Now, if you want to test that to make sure that you connected them right, just go ahead and throw an item in there. And it should end up in the chest. Yep, there's our slab. Again, we'll test this on this side. Yep, there's our slab. So now I'm going to go ahead, we'll put some glass around the perimeter. Because we're one lower, we don't have to bother with the stone blocks at the bottom anymore. So I'm going to put a couple in here for temporary. So I can place these pieces of glass. Which still allows us to open the chest. Alright, so now that we have our first layer of glass, 
the next thing that we're going to need is rails and a couple hopper minecarts. This is what's actually going to collect the drops from the golems. Now, when you're placing your rails, again, you will have to crouch to ensure they place on top of the hopper. Start off with one in the top left, one in the bottom right. However, we're going to put our minecarts on these rails right now. So one there, one there. Now that we have those in, we can place our last two rails. One in the top right, one in the bottom left, and they should automatically start spinning around like this. That will ensure that all the drops get collected from the blocks above. All right, so next thing is to extend the walls of this chamber right up to the ceiling. Now in the back here, I did put these blocks in the corner, but you don't actually need those. You could take those out. block there ended up in the wrong spot all right, now don't fill it up all the way you will need to still access or still have some access into here to place a few more things the first thing that we're going to place is the magma blocks so this in conjunction with the lava is what's actually going to kill the iron golems you'll need four magma blocks and place them in like that right on top of the hopper minecarts. Now, if you want, you can actually even extend the viewing area of your kill chamber. If you want to put in a little more glass and I actually do. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Keep falling in the hole. All right, there. So I've extended the kill chamber up by one more block. I'm going to take this one out as well, just to give us a bit of a better view. Now, the next thing that we're going to need is four signs. And the signs are what's going to hold the lava up above the magma blocks and ensure that the golem is always in it. So when you're placing your signs, you're going to want two on the left. Like this. And two on the right. Like that. This will ensure that your lava does not go anywhere. Now that we have our signs, the next thing to put in there is our lava. You could do this with two buckets, but I like to actually do it with four. So then that way, you know, the lava doesn't look like it's flowing, looks nice and calm, ready to kill. Now that we have our lava in there, that is actually the kill chamber complete. Go ahead, throw in your last few bits of glass. And this piece is done. So now we're going to head back up to the pool and we'll go ahead and put our water in. We are back in the water, or sorry, we are back in the tank where the iron golems are going to be spawning. And the next phase in this process for us is to actually place all the water. So I'm going to need uh, something a little higher to get out. So I'm going to take away that block and we'll put that one down there because that will allow me to easily place all our water. And there we have it. We have our water all placed 
And as you can see by the flow, it is all going into the middle of the pool, meaning that any iron golems that spawn inside the pool will be effectively pushed down inside the kill chamber to get killed by the lava. So the drops will be collected below. Now that we have this part done, you can go ahead, you can seal the pool up, and we can go ahead and do that final step, which is placing the last 10 beds. So I'll meet you guys back with the villagers. All right, folks, and there you have it. That is the last of our 10 beds, meaning the iron farm technically is now complete. All right, folks, so here we are back in the kill chamber. The iron farm is now complete. Now begins the waiting to make sure that we do indeed uh, get some golems and that they are going to spawn in the spots that we want them to spawn. Namely, this pool. So we can actually open this up, we can take a peek in, and see if we got any action. Now typically, when you finish your iron farm, it can take anywhere for a half hour uh, for everything to register and for the farm itself to get going. So, I'm going to park my guy right here for a little bit, and we'll see if any golems show up. And there we have it, folks. There is our first iron golem coming into the farm. Hopefully, one of many. So, as we can see, the golem falls down into the chamber. But the way it's situated, he is permanently in the lava and also getting burned by the fire from the magma blocks. And there's another one! Ah, oh, lovely, lovely. Very, very happy to see that. That means that we should have constant iron coming in. Ah, oh, this is a great day, people. Great day. All right, so I'm going to let my guy sit here for about, I don't know, we'll say half an hour or so. We'll see how much iron is collected in that time. And then using those numbers, we can extrapolate or figure out uh, what the return rates might be on this farm for, uh, for about an hour or even possibly a day. Okay. So when that is all said and done, I'll be back. And we are back. All right, so it's been about a half an hour. I have not looked inside the chest, so this will be the first time that I see what it has produced. So we'll be able to do this together. So let's go ahead and open it up and see how we did. Hmm, not bad, not bad. So 15 poppies, 49 iron, so that's almost a stack. Not too bad, not too bad at all. All right. So there we have it, folks. That is our very first iron farm complete. We have iron coming in, and if all goes well, it'll just like the, the farm itself will produce more and more the longer that it's active, and the rates will just keep getting better as we go. And oh, look, there's another one right now absolutely fantastic now the one other thing that I want to mention is that for every iron golem you will get one to five iron so your rates will vary at any given time what we're talking about here is roughly an average so we'll say roughly you know two stacks every hour not bad at all all right, now in order to finish off today's episode, I'm going to head back up to the surface and we will take a look at the fishing hut. I have since completed that. 
So I'll meet you guys back up there. Welcome back everyone. We are back up on the surface and here is the completed fishing hut. The sun is rising, the day is gorgeous. So what I'll do is I'm going to go around it so we can do kind of a 360 panoramic so you can see what it looks like on all sides and then we'll go on the inside and have a look in there. All right, now this side is going to be a little tricky. I have to climb up a little bit. All right, there's this side. One more shot from the front. All right, so now let's go in. We'll take a look. All right, here we are on the inside. Now we do have space to go right around the entire fishing pool. Now in order to use this, I would typically stand here, cast my rod, and away we go. So for some additional decoration, I have added some of these hanging vines. They do tend to uh, like to crawl down to the water, so usually I kind of take these two out whenever I want to fish. Otherwise, I just leave them there because I think they look pretty. Now this is the first floor. Yes, I say the first floor because there's actually three floors in this fishing hut. So if we come around the back here, you'll notice we have three separate sets of stairs. You can use whichever one you prefer to take you on up to the other floors. So let's go to number two. This is floor number two. Not huge, just more of a little storage area. You know, you could put some other stuff up here. Totally up to you. And then if we go up a little further, this is floor number three, which is up in the roof section of the building. So we have a little more floor up here to work with. Again, I would probably use this, you know, maybe for some additional storage or something to that effect. Either way, we do have the two extra rooms that are available to us if we want to do something with them. Now, for anyone that is really interested in this fishing hut, if you would like, I would definitely do a separate tutorial on how to build this. In fact, I would uh, rather enjoy that. So if that's something that you would want to see, let me know down in the comments and we can definitely, definitely make it happen. All right, so again, we'll take one more look from the front. Excellent. All right, now in order to finish off today's episode, let's go on a little journey. All right, so here we are. For our next episode, I think we are going to turn this space into a farm silo. As you can see, it goes down quite the distance. So we should be able to fit a lot in here using uh, multiple floors, which means we're going to be doing some building, some digging. We're going to have to whip out our redstone, start making some farms. All in all, it should be a fantastic time, and I look forward to it. If there's any particular uh, farms that you guys would like to see in this silo, let me know. We'll see what we can do to get those added. I already uh, have some in mind, but I'm always open to some other suggestions. So please feel free to add something to the comments. But that is all we have time for today. So until next time, my name is Light, and you've been watching Hopelessly Bedrock. Bye!